Hey guys and welcome to the Jidoka basic section of our Jidoka series. Now in this section we'll be going over automation, autonomation, as well as some visual controls. But before we get started, me and my dog Apple will give you a brief intro into the subject. If you've watched the rest of the videos on this site, you've probably guessed that I have very few friends and even fewer visitors. Because of this, Apple is not very well socialized when I do have an occasional visitor. My two regular visitors are the maintenance man Jack and parole officer Jenkins both of whom Apple has bitten. In this case, Apple biting someone can be thought of as a defect getting through to the customers, Jack and Officer Jenkins. So my first step was to buy a kennel and to lock Apple up whenever a visitor came to the door. But on several occasions, he got out and the biting continued. There's about 30 feet between Apple's kennel and the front door. So I decided to put a motion detector and alarm about 10 feet away from the door so I could tell if Apple was coming. This reduced the frequency of the bites, but they still continued. So I decided to move the alarm back 10 more feet so I'd have more time to react when Apple got out. This again reduced the frequency of the bites, but there were still some getting through. I decided to buy another detector. I put this one 10 feet away from the door. Now I have two alarms to help me react to Apple getting out. As you probably guessed, this step reduced biting, but there were still some bites getting through. Notice that all the alarms I put in place were simply detecting defects. They did nothing to prevent them. I could, in theory, put an infinite number of motion detectors between the door and Apple's kennel, and there would still be some opportunity for Apple to get out and bite. If I want to prevent defects, I'd have to go back to the source. The source is the process I use to lock Apple's kennel. If I mistake-proof this process, then I actually wouldn't need any motion detectors. Building quality into a process to prevent defects is a major component of Jidoka. So Jidoka translates to automation. Now don't go looking for automation in the dictionary. It doesn't exist in the English language. It's a play off the words autonomous and automation. Toyota combined these two terms into automation to describe the word jidoka. The word you see here is the kanji or the Chinese characters for the word automation. This is the kanji for autonomation. Do you spot the difference? The difference between these two words is the man or the human character. When you insert the man radical into automation, it becomes what Toyota calls automation or jidoka. So that's why jidoka or automation is often called automation with a human touch. Jidoka implies two things. First is the clear separation of those tasks that should be performed by a man versus those that should be performed by a machine. Machines are great at performing repetitive tasks but lack human intelligence. In contrast, humans are great at using their brains, but often grow bored or produce errors when given repetitive tasks. With each step in your manufacturing process, you should ask, does this person really need to be on the machine for this process to work properly? Are we just wasting a valuable thinker by making him sit here and wait and watch the machine? Focus should be put on building intelligence into machines so you can free up your most valuable resources, your operators. Remember the looms that Toyota used in the textile industry? Intelligence was built into the machine so they would stop once they detected a thread break. This way, workers were freed up to perform other meaningful tasks rather than sitting and waiting. Now that you have a good understanding of what machines are to do versus what operators are to do, it's time to start building quality into the source of both man and machine tasks. How can we prevent errors rather than just detecting them? When toasting bread, I used to sit there and watch the toaster until it was finished. This is because my toast could burn, so it was my job to stop the toaster when it was just right. Luckily, the manufacturer understood automation and built human intelligence into the toaster. The timer on the toaster allows for a clear separation of work between me and the toaster. Now all I'm responsible for doing is loading and unloading the toaster. The toaster is smart enough to stop toasting when the bread reaches the time I set. Now I'm free to perform other tasks while the toaster is working. Think for a moment. Do you have operators that sit in front of machines with little to nothing to do? Is their primary job to sit and wait for errors to occur? Is there a way you could build human intelligence into the machine just like the timer on the toaster so you could free up that operator? I've seen many cases where it was an operator's primary job to sit and watch a machine run. This is not only a complete waste of talent on the part of the company but also an insult to the operator. This also poses a secondary hazard to the company. Given this scenario, over time, operators shut down mentally, which breeds laziness in the workforce. 
Failing to explore automation is a lose-lose for both the operator and the organization. So back to automation versus automation. The primary goal of automation is to replace workers. Unfortunately, automating a process is rarely successful. This is because automating operations that a human used to perform often still require the machine to be monitored. So as the process took an operator before, it now takes a machine and an operator. The cost model is higher with automation. In contrast, automation builds human intelligence into the machine, so an operator is no longer needed. As you can see, this model is cheaper than the original manual process and the automated process. There are three levels to Jidoka. They are recognition, action, and prevention. The first step to intelligent automation is to build a mechanism into the machine that detects defects. Depending on what you are manufacturing, this can be as sophisticated as a computer vision system or a simple latch that is tripped when a part is larger than spec. At this stage of Jidoka, the machine detects an error and performs an action to let the operator know a defect has occurred. A flashing light or an alarm lets the operator know the machine needs to be shut off before more defects are generated. At this basic stage of Jidoka, an operator is still coupled with the machine. Next is Action Jidoka. At this stage, the machine not only has a mechanism for detecting defects, but it also has the ability to segregate defects into a separate bin from good parts. This prevents defects from making their way to the final customer. At this stage, an operator is not needed to run the machine, but may be needed to properly dispose of defective parts and make adjustments to the machine to prevent more defects from being generated. In the previous levels of Jidoka, the machine reacted after defects were generated. In prevention Jidoka, the machine takes action before defective products are produced. The machine continuously samples parts and checks for statistical shifts or drifts. When it senses a product moving toward a spec limit, it makes adjustments to correct itself before defects are produced. In this case, an operator is rarely, if ever, needed. Ideally, at this stage, a lot of pokayoke, or mistake proofing in English, is built into the machine. An example of this would be to weld down certain adjustments so they physically cannot shift during long hours of operation. So what do I mean by pokayoke? This is a real example from the shipyard. Welders used to mix gas and airlines on their welding machines. This not only caused downtime, but was also a potential safety risk. So we color-coded the fixtures and the tips for the gas and airlines. This reduced the errors, but they were still occurring. So we color-coded the entire lines. This again helped, but didn't prevent errors from occurring. We finally made gas fixtures male and air fixtures female to pokayoke this process. Gas and airlines physically could not be mixed up anymore. <laughs>